Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the second annual Coyote Tales. I think we're all here because we all believe in the power of story, the ability for story to create empathy between one another, and really, more than anything, the power of listening. I think we honor each other the most when we listen to one another. Landed there somehow, probably helicopters, and used diving gear to get this piece of metal because we could see it. He had written on the back of my map, drawn the picture, so we had that. You could see it. It was down in the water. And I pull into that because I see that it's got two legs and it's a baby. So I eye lock on this toddler, throw the car in park, open the door, and I am just dying to make sure that it doesn't go into those other two lanes of 50 mile an hour traffic. And I thought this must be what it's like to be on acid. This is incredible. So I got naked and I sang. He says to me, uh, open it up and take it out. I said, you know what? You open it up and take it out. He said, I'll tell you what, we'll just put it through the x-ray machine. Off it goes. Cage, hedgehog, through x-ray machine, no problem. Last minute, aha, I got an idea. Pancake makeup, but I didn't have any. But here's what you can do. You take... <laughs> I said, you know, I really don't want to know what's going on, but I would love to have my baby photos back that I had sent. Could you just send those to me? And he said, lady, it's time for you to move on. And even when I ventured out there in a big group with a lot of male friends, it just didn't feel good anymore. It was as though every leaf was tainted by the knowledge of the violence that had gone on there and the loss that I felt. And I proceeded to very carefully, with the preciseness that only an eight-year-old could muster, to cut off my eyebrows. <laughs> All of them down to the little, little nubs. And then I put the scissors down and sat back to uh, survey my handiwork. And uh, I remember thinking, huh, it's not quite the result I was expecting. I still walked in the woods with him every day, and he still brought me colorful wildflowers. But instead of sending them off in the mail, I gave them names and I put them in chairs, and they became my imaginary students. And this was my secret garden. 